guys, welcome to the Rugby Fox channel. Um, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're looking forward to the video today. We're going to be doing things a little differently. Uh, we're going to be analyzing some key positions as part of our new position series where we are going to be analyzing positions, giving in some details. This is great for beginners as well as people who are experienced in rugby as it just breaks down the components of what each position means. I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone who subscribed, liked and followed the page. Appreciate it and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts, your comments. So please share some knowledge back if you can. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. So today's series, we are going to be focusing on the open side flanker. This is obviously a very special position, especially in my bias. I might be a bit subjective here as I'm I'm starting this series with the loose forwards. So today we're going to be doing open side flanking and in our next few videos we'll be doing the blind side as well as the eight man and then how all these positions in the loose link together to add massive value in the team in order to retain and regain the ball. It's definitely a, a position quite close to my heart and one I really like to specialize in and, and gain a lot of insight into as well. Um, a position I played myself more more of a blind side actually back in the day, but I've played my first year the open side role, and um, I can I can really tell you it's, it's probably one of the most, if not for me, the most important position on the field, especially because of the massive impact that these players can have in the field. Jump into some videos. What is it about this position that makes it so awesome? Is it the Kulisi running? Is it the Soviet jackling? Wow, you do really get some amazing players in this position. I mean, just look at the examples and some role models for young players to follow, such as McCall, Wolverton, the Sotois. I mean, Underhill, Hooper and Lowe are also amazing in their own right. It's, it's, it's amazing how each nation can produce such quality open side flankers. There's just something about this position. I mean, look at how many players in this position have won trophies as leaders as well. There's something very majestic about the open side flanker. I mean, take McCaw's legacy. I mean, two Springbok captains lifted World Cup trophies. Um, it's just a phenomenal position. Just look at Tom Curry jackling the ball. Wow, I mean, these players can do anything. I mean, after doing some research, and I mean, the stats don't lie, the World Rugby Player of the Year winners have been open side flankers six times since 2004. That just shows you how crucial these players are. I mean, just look at that list. Let's get to the juicy stuff. Um, Let's talk about the core roles of the open side flanker. They ask me this question a lot, and I ask them that question as well. And it's funny to see how many people are not are not aware of this. But the, the core roles basically are to retain and regain position. So in other words, to keep the ball and to get the ball. Absolute classic example of how to regain the ball, Audi Sevilla for the Hurricanes. Let's start breaking it down. Um, the core role of the open side flank, we like to distinguish rugby players into categories and we can assess them from there on. So we like to, to see players as mental, physical, tactical and technical traits. And to in order for a open side flanker to perform as core roles, to retain and regain position, which one of those four pillars do you reckon are the most important? And influential. Is it mental? Is it physical? Is it tactical? Or is it technical? Now, many of you would have gotten that correct, but 100% for me, and again, I'm, I don't know everything and I might be wrong, but for me, it's 100% mental. These players are smart. For these players, knowing when to make the right decisions as well as using anticipation, they can have a massive effect on the game. Why mental? So, as you can see, one of the key aspects of mental skills is 
anticipation. And anticipation is crucial for this position as you need to know when and where the breakdown will be, where the play is going, what you can anticipate is going to happen in the next phase or two. It is extremely important and not just in defense. A flanker doesn't just steal ball. He also makes sure we keep ball. So he needs to anticipate on attack as well as defense how we can keep the ball and how we can get the ball back. So an example of that would be off to a scrum. Where would the next phase be? How should I use my running lines to make a massive impact on the game? To get to the breakdown sooner, to beat them to the breakdown, very important. And having the skill will allow us to have a massive impact on the game. Back to the original question. In what order would the open side flanker utilize his four pillars? Obviously, number one would be mental. Two, tactical. Three, technical. And number four would be physical. So let's break down these pillars. What does tactical mean? So in tactical, those would be your running lines, your vision, and your decision making. Very important. Am I running the right lines from a line out in a scrum? Do I have the vision to join in an attack and a support play? Do I have the ability to communicate? And is my decision making on point? Am I playing a good pass? Am I making the right tackle? Is the steal on? I mean, this isn't something a flanker does every day, but look at the vision, the tactical knowledge as to how to execute this trap. Another tactical advantage, knowing your role in line out lines. Our third pillar is the technical. What is your execution like? Can you steal effectively? Are you able to run, catch, and pass and offload? What is your tackling technique like? Look at Sia Kulisi's running and offloading skills. Brilliant. There really are some non-negotiables to being an open side flanker. What is your tackling like? I mean, a great example here is Underhill from England. Probably one of the best tacklers in the world right now due to his brilliant technique. Underhill shows his class here by raising the space very well driving with the legs, arms tight, close into his body, great attitude, just shows you how important technical is. The fourth pillar, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's not important, it still is, but the physical traits of an open sider isn't as important as a physical trait would be to a wing. So there are certain physical traits that are important to a flanker, and let's dive into those. Physical relates to repeated efforts like returning to action, your aerobic and anaerobic fitness levels. I like to use the words high numbers because open siders are all about who can get the most carries, the most tackles, the most steals, hit the most rack. High numbers are always a goal if you're an open side flank. I use this snippet from an ad Richie McCall because I thought this sums up open side flankers so well. Um, every morning he wakes up and he writes in his journal, start again. And for me, that's that's a great synonym for being an open sider, they always go again and again and again. One rock isn't enough, they have to add more. Take Terry de Soutois, Rugby World Cup 2007. He broke the record for 38 tackles in a test match against the All Blacks. Now, if he didn't use these repeated efforts, returning to action, constantly starting again, starting again, he as an open sider wouldn't have had such a massive impact on the World Cup. And um, same with Richie McCaw, never spent a long time on the ground, was always on his feet. Unbelievable players these two are, and I thought this is an excellent example. Next example I want to use is James Fenter. What a brilliant player. I mean, with his physical traits, he brings an explosive speed that hasn't been seen so hasn't been seen so often before, especially in South Africa. And I mean, that just shows how physical traits can vary. I mean, if you compare him to Richie McCall, Francois Lowe, they don't have the same speed, and that just shows how amazing this position is. That everyone can be so different, and yet still so effective. Summarize again what the four pillars in order is obviously number one mental, two tactical, three technical, and four physical. Um, the next example is a valuable lesson I learned and love to share it with you. The following video is from when I was at Marisburg College in Matric playing first team. And I want to ask you what the flanker does well here. I know it isn't actually at line break. I want you to check again. It's a fact that our open sider, one of my best friends, was able 
to clean that ball properly, doing its job, getting to the first phase from the scrum, securing the ball. That just shows how crucial the role of the open side flank is. If he didn't do his job well, I as a blind side flanker would not have scored my try. And that just shows how important it is, not just for the whole team to work together, but even for the loose trio to work together. That's it. That's basically the open side role summed up. Yo, such exciting stuff. Um, if I missed out on anything or you want to add any comments or views and would like to maybe, you know, just add new information to what we know, please feel free to do so. And to summarize, here are some of the key focus areas of an uh, open side flanker. Um, anticipation is key. Communication is key. Controlling the speed of the ruck ball, getting lightning quick ball or slow ball. Ball carrying is important. Ruck work is super important. Tackling technique is crucial. Getting back in the game like Richie McCall and Terry Dissotar showed us. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe on the channel. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike, leave a comment. If you liked it, leave more comments. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Rugby Fox channel appreciates it. I'm your host, Reynard, and thank you very much.